Hello, and welcome back to our third installment of the cast interview series. Today, we have the incredible cast of Fefu and her friends here for an exclusive Theater Arendelle interview. So today, we're going to start off with our rapid fire questions. So get those pens and papers ready. And here we go. Our first question is, what is one word to describe the show? Three, two, one. Cool. Wait, Angel, what does yours say? I just realized how much smaller my writing is than everybody else. I said organized chaos, so I also kind of cheated, but. I love that. And Bronwyn, do you want to explain yours? Mine is enthralling. Question number two. What is one word you would use to describe your fellow castmates? Three, two, one. I love it. Rachel, do you want to talk about your word? Yeah, we're just such a great supportive group of friends. And I know we always have each other's back and we're always there to lean on if one of us needs each other. And we always support each other in our work and encourage us. So supportive was my word. Question number three. Who in the cast would you say is most like their character? Three, two, one. We have a me? variety. Me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I feel like you have a lot of similarities in terms of like your intelligence and like your, um, like how assertive you are in the way that you speak to people. And there's just like a lot of you that I also see in Christina. Question number four. Who is your favorite character in the show? Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> we have two Emmas. Nell, do you want to talk about Emma? Yeah, Emma is just a great, fun person. And so, like, just the things that she says in the show are beautiful and impactful. And and she's just so well-rounded and also nuanced. And ah, you get a load of molly in this role because it's gonna be amazing question number five what is one thing that you can't live without during fefu and her friends rehearsals three two one can you explain your answer amelia what is that yes it's very small because i'm using the same sheet of paper but it says the shoes slash heels which I think several other people had character shoes. Um, and from the very first rehearsals, we've been wearing our character shoes or so, kind of a, a replacement for the time being, um, some sort of heels. And I feel like it kind of has become an, an integral part of the show in a weird way and um, a really specific thing in terms of getting into the movement and the character body and also just the world of the 1930s and kind of where the show lives as a whole. Okay, so final question for our rapid fire section. Question six, which character do you think you would personally be friends with? Three, two, one. Oh, that's so cool. Elif, do you wanna explain your choice? Okay, yes. So Fefu, because she's like, she like has like her own opinions and she like fights for what she believes in and she like doesn't really care about like being like the other she's like not like the other girls but like it's just <laughs> um she's just independent and she trusts herself that way and then Paula because um her of her world weaves essentially and she like is woke in a way um, and sees things the way they are. So, and I think both of those people would be great to be friends with because um, you can like actually talk about stuff and like discuss things and philosophical ideas and all that stuff. So yeah. Cool. And Molly? I want my own character. <laughs> um, just because I have had like such a process getting to know Emma as a person and like had my original expectations about who she was going into the process and like, just meeting her character to actor has been a really, really interesting kind of journey for me. So I like, and like what I've found in her, I, I'm like absolutely in love with. And like, yeah, I've just, Emma's so close to my heart. I'm like, I wanna be your 
best friend forever. We would have very great conversations about so many weird things and it just would be hilarious. So yeah, I, come on. <laughs> well, that was awesome. Thank you all so much for your answers. That wraps up the rapid fire section of our interview, but because we are so excited to hear from this amazing cast, we have a few more questions lined up. So the first one I have is for Reese. What is something that you've learned from your character? So I think that um, working with Cindy has been a real lesson in like how complicated and nuanced people can be. Um, these characters, like all the women in this play are incredibly nuanced because Fornes wrote this specifically to be a plotless play that didn't have, you know, female characters that fell into archetypes. So a lot of their stories are very vague and it's been a real process of like trying to figure out like who these women actually are. Um, but particularly with Cindy, like what I've been really discovering is that people can have all kinds of like contrasting and nuanced like things that are part of their personality. Like you can be confident and also super insecure and also at ease and also afraid of a lot. Um, and so it's been really neat to kind of discover that through working with her. Um, and then just kind of take that into the world too. Like, I think sometimes we forget that people aren't just walking archetypes of who we think they are. Yeah. And Molly, can I throw that same question to you? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to take that one. Uh, quite uh, similarly, actually, Therese, I um, definitely had an idea about who Emma was going into this process. Uh, I mentioned that on Instagram, go check it out, plug. Um, uh, but basically uh, I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy because I feel that this character is very similar to me. Um, it, the process has been anything but easy for me. Uh, and, and I think it's because, you know, we judge ourselves way harder than we'll ever judge a character. And so kind of putting too much of yourself into the character or, or not taking the time to like have that separation can kind of just make it more difficult to make choices in the room. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just kind of what this character has taught me about myself is that like, I sometimes in the rehearsal process need to be able to step back and be like, okay, like now is not myself making these choices, but rather this is the character doing these things. And it doesn't matter necessarily what I would do in those situations, but to really be able to like have that lens of the character and find where you intersect, where you uh, come together and where you don't. Yeah, that's such a great takeaway. Thanks, thank you both. Okay, second question I have is for Rachel and Angel. Um, the question is, what has surprised you most during the course of your rehearsal process? Something that has surprised me has been discovering the humor that lives within the play. And that's kind of revealed itself throughout our rehearsal process. Um, this is a piece of work that has had so much analysis done on it. So it's been exciting to get the text off the page. And as a result, be constantly surprised by the humor that is present throughout the entire show, which I wasn't readily aware of upon my first few reads of the script until we as actors started bringing these characters to life and then finding the nuance in the piece. So definitely finding the humor has been a really joyous surprise. As you know, or anyone else who's familiar with the script, my character Julia is in a wheelchair for the majority of the play. And being an able-bodied actor coming into this role, especially she experiences mental illness, so I decided to focus on the mental illness side of it and didn't think about, you know, how this disability affected Julia as a person until I got into the room and got into the chair and was like, oh my God, this is a different world down here. Like this is a whole new universe. And that it wasn't until I started talking with our uh, disability consultant, Curtis, that I started to realize like it is a totally different process. Like despite me being a, a trained actor who's excited to dive into a challenge, a new process, like by, by myself, there's no way I was going to figure this out. And I'm also amazed by how much like I've been able to interact with like my cast members and my peers on this subject as well because not only is it experience for me to learn and like adapt and like create connections like I feel like everyone else has like helped me learn and we've all had a chance to like experience something in a very like safe and educational environment so I'm like grateful for this uh challenge and opportunity it's amazing to hear thank you both so much for your answers the next question I have is for Nell and Bronwyn so what did you take away from exploring this play and what are some messages that you hope you'll leave audiences thinking about after they come to see it? So um, something that I took away from exploring this play 
is just how much the patriarchal presence can be felt without any men around, <laughs> as well as diving into learning how these specific women in this specific time are affected by that. And I hope that the audiences are left thinking about how a lot of the restrictions and strains that were placed on women and female presenting people in the 1930s are still very much present today. And I also hope that they think about the ways in which we or the people in our lives try to free from, like free ourselves from that now and, mm -hmm. and how, how far we've come and, and also how we haven't at the same time. Now we are on the same wavelength because I really just hope this makes the audience consider all the ways in which the world traps and oppresses us and all the ways in which uh, we do that to ourselves and each other. Um, because there's another way, like it doesn't have to be like that. Um, but if we don't recognize that oppression and that trapping um, in the first place that we can't actually be free, we can't actually choose differently. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say something that I've taken away from this play is um, the importance of exploration and in trying new things um, because um, if you only ever stick to doing the same thing, then you'll cheat yourself forever of every other unexplored pleasure. And um, so I really just hope that people take that away from this play, that not only um, the uh, tight restrictions and structures and trappings of not only oppression, but as Nell so succinctly put, that like when um, the face of that is not even in the room, it's like us doing it to one another mm -hmm. and doing it to ourselves. Um, but also that like once we realize that, that like we can choose differently and we can um, experience like endless joys. I love that. And so well said, both of you. Thank you so much for that. And our last question is going to Elif and Amelia. So it is this group of fourth year's last Theater Arendelle main stage show. So what is one thing that you're gonna be taking away from your experience as you enter into the industry next year? Ah, uh, so many things, but um, overall, I think it's the important, and I always talk about this, it's the importance, importance of tension release, I would say. Always, 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 because it's, it's, you can't ever squeeze anything out of yourself is what I'm trying to internalize. Um, it's when you release yourself and like kind of let go of the control you have over things or the illusion of the control you have over things, then you actually do better in life and you experience life better and you enjoy it better. It's like, like singing a high note, you know, you can't ever squeeze it out of yourself. You can't ever squeeze that note out of yourself. You can't ever force someone to love you. You can't ever like be so stressed out that it can't really, being stressed out cannot lead you to your goals. It's just going to stress you out. So letting go of things is actually going to make your life better and your acting better and your experiences better and more enjoyable. I think that's something that's really been central to this production and also the program as a whole and kind of the um, the ideology, if you will, of TDS is collaboration and working together to kind of create something that you couldn't have created alone. Um, and Brian has really given us a lot of leeway in terms of the choices that we make and really encouraged us to play. And I think part of the reason that we've been able to do that um, is because we're all so supportive of each other and you really trust your castmates and we know that we're kind of, we're working together, we have each other's backs. If you're gonna go to the stars, everyone else is gonna follow you there and they're gonna kind of, um, whatever choice you make, they're going to chase you, which is just an absolutely marvelous experience in especially a play like this where there is so much room for interpretation and so much room to kind of have fun with it. Um, that kind of spirit of collaboration and working together, I think has been central to the entire process. That's so beautiful. I love that. That's so great to hear. Well, that wraps up our interview for today. Thank you all so, so much for your answers and for joining me. Fefu and her friends will be streamed live from Theater Arendelle from February 17th to March 6th. So make sure you grab your tickets now. You can find the link in our bio of any of our social pages or in the description box of this YouTube video. Thank you all so much for joining us and thank you all for watching. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Woo! <laughs> Your show.